Now, the Senate has asked uh, the federal government not to proceed with any plans to increase electricity tariffs in the country. Now, the upper legislative chamber also reached a resolution mandating its committee on power to investigate the over 2 trillion Naira subsidy requirements as claimed by the Minister of Power and another 1.3 trillion Naira owed electricity uh, generation companies as Jenkos as well as $1.3 billion indebted to gas companies. Arise correspondent Omo Bazwai tells us more. The Senate returned to plenary on Wednesday, troubled about a planned increase in electricity tariff and arbitrary billing of unmetered customers by distribution companies, discos. Coming on the matters of public importance, Senator Aminu Iya Abbas in a motion co-sponsored by 10 others, drew attention to the alleged plans by electricity companies and other statutory authorities to hike the electricity tariff in the country. Recall that this Senate, via a motion call on the federal government and NARC not to increase tariff on electricity, uh, electricity for the customers and citizens of this country at this time. The motion enjoyed popular support from the federal lawmakers with many lawmakers like Senator Amino Tambua cautioning the federal government to jettison the idea, especially at a time when citizens are still grappling with the economic hardship brought on them by the removal of fuel subsidy. The removal of any subsidy, not to talk of electricity subsidy, will be more than adding petrol to fire. At the end of the debate, Senate advised the federal government to stand down the planned increase of electricity tariffs. It also resolved to investigate the over 2 trillion naira the Minister of Power said was required for electricity tariff to avoid the repeat of fuel subsidy scandal. The Senate also mandated its Committee on Power to probe the 1.3 trillion naira the Ministry of Power is said to be owing generating companies and another $1.3 billion owned gas companies. There are subsidies in abroad, in UK, in US, in America for food. There are subsidies for electricity. They cannot ask us that we will not give subsidies. So I supporting this motion provably that we should rethink and increasing our tariffs. This was as the Senate also called for investigation of the role of the Ministry of Power, Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission and Siglag's company in the failed agreement to provide prepaid meters and ensure that citizens are not shortchanged. It also asked its Committee on Power to engage with the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to find a lasting solution to Nigeria's energy billing system, even as it opened a probe into the metering activities of discos and the extent of their compliance with relevant legal and regulatory framework in the country. Omo Bazwai, Rise News. Right, uh, for more on this, I'm joined from uh, Lagos Studio by uh, the spokesman of the power distributors under the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, uh, Sunday Odunton. He's in our Lagos Studio. Thank you so much for joining us on Arise uh, Prime Time. Let me just uh, make a quote here uh, from, you know, stakeholders. They're saying discos are high on revenue and low on supply presently uh nigerians are not getting the kind of electricity supply they need to meet not just their daily uh, requirements but also to power their businesses why has efficient and adequate supply of electricity eluded nigeria Cons look electricity ge generation started over a hundred years ago in this country Thank you very much, Ngozi. Um, with due respect, those who say the discos are high on revenue and low on service delivery, I understand their frustrations. I understand how they feel about uh, lack of electricity or lack of sufficient electricity in the country. But it is a pity that a lot of people talk out of ignorance. 
And I'm saying it with all sense of um, humility and with due respect to them. Uh, we need to all face the reality that uh, is tearing us in the face. Electricity uh, different companies is just the one below the value chain in this country. We have producers, we have transporters, and we have distributors. Distributors are also the retailers. For you to distribute a product, it has to be produced. When the product is produced, it has to be transported to you. But we are not in the game of naming and blaming or claiming. What we should all do is to look at the challenges in the sector as a whole. It is very easy for our distinguished big men senators to move a motion on the floor of the House to say, don't do this, don't do that. But we also need to back up what we are saying with action in terms of ensuring liquidity of the sector. You cannot be owing a gas supplier. That's a raw material, by the way. You cannot be owing you as a manufacturer or a producer of any product. If you are owing uh, the supplier of your raw material, it won't supply. So uh, we need to look at the problem. Yes, you said we've been generating electricity for many years. What we do here is very unusual, and that is why we are not getting sufficient electricity in this country. Number one, you cannot talk about electricity without talking about pricing. Number two, you cannot talk about service delivery, because when you talk about efficiency, you have to link efficiency with the pricing. And uh, let me start with uh, uh, military departments and agencies. And I'll, I'll start this by thanking Mr. President for taking a step last week. What happened? Our member, one of our members, the Abuja Electricity Division Company, took out an advert saying that the presidential villa and some other military departments and agencies are in them a lot of money. And in the process, I don't know how that got to the president, because I said it on the program a few days ago that the president needs to be watching television, oh, because a lot of things happened that he probably is not aware. So as soon as Mr. President got to know, he gave an instruction that they should pay that bill this week. Okay, assuming we did not take out an advert, that means nobody will even know, nobody will do anything. So my message to those who work with the federal government, with the president, with the governors, is that pay your bill as I went due. Don't wait until we put up an advert for you to pay. And when we talk about presidential villa, that's only one of the debtors. So presidential villa, they want to pay now, very good. That's a good one. And we should also remember, it didn't start today. Oh. It's not as if this, one, this new government just came and started uh, owing. It has been a historical thing. In the last 20 years, there's no government in Nigeria that has not been owing electricity bills at all levels. So these are the things we need to desist from. If we want there to be a, a, a good uh, sector where things will work, all of us need to work together. And we're all guilty, including with the operators. I'm not saying uh, the government or the customers alone, but all of us, the government, the operators, the customers, because Nigerians too need to stop stealing energy. What we do in this country is that talk is cheap. Even we in the media, my dear sister, you the journalist, the truth of the matter is that even in your area you know thieves. How many times have you come on our TV to tell Nigerians about the thieves in your neighborhood? What we do in Nigeria is that everybody just sit down. Right. Talk so is cheap, it's a multi it's a multi criticize blindly. Right. We can't be doing that. I'm not sure Mr. Dutor can actually hear me, but it seems it, it's a multi-thronged, multi-layered uh, problem or challenge, if you like, in Nigeria's uh, past sector. And these debts that you talk about, those cannot be the oh, only, yes. I mean, the most fundamental issues. I, I'd like you to address what the fundamental challenges are. I know you mentioned uh, funding earlier. What are the most fundamental issues that need to be dealt with uh, very quickly in a way that we can begin to see uh, you know, uh, changes. Thank you very much. The most fundamental issue is liquidity. That is the most fundamental issue. If a businessman puts money into any business, the first and most important thing is cost recovery. If you put 100 million into a business and you're only able to collect 13 million, 
13% of your uh, investment. How can you have the uh, motivation to go and borrow or put more money into the same business? So the most important thing is for everyone to play their part. I will start with us as service providers. We need to be more efficient. We need to see customers at King. We need to respond to fault clearing on time. And I can also say for a fact that in the last 10 years, we have improved a lot from where we were in 2013. That is one. Then people also need to understand that there's a value chain in this business. So we need to understand the challenges being faced by the generation companies. And when people are saying, don't uh, pay the subsidy, withdraw it, or don't withdraw it. We are not interested in that. What we are interested in is, if the government say they want to be paid subsidy, fine, but they should pay and pay on time, as I went you. If the government say they want to withdraw subsidy, fine, as long as they, they, they tell Nigerians and they know what to expect from such withdrawals people's ability to pay, uh, the situation in the country as a whole, all those ones are things that do not concern us. Because our own is say, what we're saying is simple. What we're saying is that for the generation company, they need payment assurance. They have to pay the gas suppliers. For the transmission company, they have to be able to tran transmit Mr. power from right. the point of production to the point of distribution. Mr. Anduto, if I may come in here, I mean, when we talk about subsidy and the issue of liquidity that you even, you know, mentioned earlier, the whole idea of unbundling the power sector and bringing in private investors or to address the liquidity uh, problem to ensure that, you know, there's enough funding uh, to address the challenges in the power sector, of course, to ensure that there's availability uh, for Nigerians. But it seems nothing really has changed. As a matter of fact, uh, every now and again, we've heard stakeholders say, look, there's a need to look at uh, the privatization of the discos, uh, 11 of them, uh, even the Senate weighed in on that particular issue. So why have you not still, uh, the investors, not been able to, uh, you know, bring in the funding that's required to turn around uh, Nigeria's power sector? Thank you. Um, I've been on this job for a long time. In the last 10 years, I've witnessed people coming and going. So when people say, look at it again, uh, privatization is not working, send them away, bring them back. For your information, they have sent some people away they are brought in some other people. Even in the case of our discos, some discos are waiting to be sold. And I'm calling on investors, please come and buy. Because we should not be waiting for buyers for this long. If the business is so profitable, if it's so good, if people are paying, then we should see big players coming in to buy them. So the reason why you don't see investors, especially foreign investors, coming to Nigeria to invest is one, the issue of cost recovery. Number two, the issue of sanctity of contract. F foreign investors believe that Nigeria does not respect the sanctity of contract. That was the belief way back then. I hope things have changed. I don't know. So I'm saying that when you say, why haven't they brought in the needed investment? Those who came into this sector in 2013 mm -hmm. brought investment. And when people say they didn't invest anything, that is pure ignorance, okay? What I'm saying is that on both sides, from those of the uh, operators in the whole valley chain and the customers that we serve, I think we all need to do more. That's what I'm saying. But to, right. to talk, talk is cheap, oh, to talk and say, <laughs> uh, send them away. If you bring an angel to the Nigerian power sector today, the angel can never perform. Bring a Malaika, Ngozi, the Malaika will fail. So it's a very, very fundamental issue. But you say, look, discos are not making money. In the f uh, second quarter of 2023, uh, discos actually made uh, about 263 uh, billion naira, an improvement from the previous figures of 240 something, meaning that the discos are actually making money. They're making profit. And even on the metering issue, some uh, you know stakeholders say that the discos actually prefer unmetered customers. That way, discos are maximizing profit. Thank you very much, Ngozi. Uh, you have asked two questions. Let's separate it. I'll come to the issue of uh, metered, 
metered and unmetered customers. But let me start with disco making, you said they made 263 billion naira. Number one, these codes are not making profit. Number two, when you pay for electricity, that money is not going to the discos. The discos are collection agents. At the maximum, only 20% are retained by the discos. But number three, each of the discos, each of the 11 discos, they are distributors who go and buy this product and sell. In most cases, take it on credit and sell. If you buy 12 billion naira worth of electricity in a month, and all you are able to collect is 8 billion, and Madame Ngozi, who hears the figure, 8 billion, thinks it's a lot of money. What Madame Ngozi has not told Nigeria, or what she does not know, or she's not aware of, is that there's a shortfall of 4 billion. That shortfall of 4 billion means there's a debt of 4 billion. Is that profit? No, that's not profit. That's number one. Number two, if electricity is supposed What's to be sold, for the say shortfall? at, for instance, 100 non-payment, I told you that earlier on. Okay. No, non -pay, number one is non-payment. Number two is the lack of cost-reflective tariff. That is to say, tariff that will be, uh, that will cover the cost of production. Now, that's where the issue of strategy, the issue of don't increase tariff comes in. I had a senator say, don't increase tariff. That's a fantastic thing. But my dear distinguished senator, tell me how best we can recover the cost. Why not? If you can put the top up or reduce the cost of governance in the country, then so that people in government should stop living in a flamboyant way. We can use the access to produce power for this country. Nigeria does not have electricity because we don't have the right priority. I talk about this government. For the past 20 years, I can give you all the, all the shortcomings of every single government in the last 20 years. Mm. Now, very quickly, every now and again, you talk about cost-reflective tariff. As discos, have you really come together yes. to say, look, this is what is realistic, considering the prevailing economic situation that Nigeria, you know, finds herself? What exactly is this cost-reflective tariff in terms of figures? What would be realistic for Nigerians to pay that it would be mutually beneficial for both the discos, even the Jenkos at the TCN, and of course the consumer, the, the final, uh, you know, customer? Thank you very much. Allow me to quickly say something that would sh throw more light. Because I'm an Igba man who, the, this industry is different from many industries in terms of regulation. This is a very heavily regulated industry. We have a regulator, NAC, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, who are doing a very difficult job and commended the job. It is their job to fix the tariff. We submit a proposal, they are the ones that say, this is what people should be paying for electricity. And in doing that, they have to maintain the balance. People's affordability, the economic indices, the foreign exchange, and all of those. They are doing a very difficult job, and people need to understand that. They even take steps and ensure they punish us Every time or any time any of the discos is not doing what we are supposed to do, we get punished, we get fined. So they are the ones that say this is how much. So it's not the discos. That's number one. Number two, I've told you earlier on that even discos, as you pay for electricity, because the, the money is not coming to me as a disco. The money is actually going upstream to generation companies, transmission companies, gas suppliers, and of course 20% to the discos. But what we are saying is that every time we push electricity out into the neighborhood, from Trans Amadi in Port Harcourt to Ilori, Ikeja, uh, Ikeja, GRA, and most places in Lagos, or Abuja, or Bompai in Kano, or Refid in Jos. Refid, Bompai, Ikeja, GRA belong to the rich people. They steal energy. The rich also steal in Nigeria, not just the poor. And the welders, among the poor, the welders, the battery chargers, they steal a lot. When you steal the energy, you are destroying the economy. We cannot recover our costs. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying the, right. the it, ministry, it, departments, and agencies are not paying their bills. Help is, me is to that beg not, them to pay. The Nigerian well, military. You're, you're seizing pay. this opportunity to, to you know, beg, in your own words, to beg those that are, uh, you know, uh, perpetual 
uh, you know, debtors uh, to uh, the discos. Now, on the yes. issue of and, uh, and on the issue begging, of the regulator, and, and also, right? Uh, on the issue of the regulator, NEC, yes. Uh, I mean, like you pointed out, there have been instances where NEC had had to, you know, come down hard on uh, discos. Uh, they are, discos yes. are alleged to be fleecing Nigerians. Back to the issue of uh, you know uh, metering, uh, fleecing Nigerians over. Over fleecing, as a matter of fact, you know, making okay. so much money from not metering Nigerians. As a matter of fact, there's a figure that says uh, Disco's made about seventy million dollars in that nine months in 2023 uh, alone, and I mean, seven point one million Nigerians are unmetered. And we're hearing that the Disco's prefer that situation because you actually make more money. Thank you very much. Again, Ngozi. The issue of this code making more money from people who have no meter is a completely untrue statement. The reality is this. Those who are metered, there is what we call payment assurance from them. If you are metered, there's not likely to be much argument between me and you, me as a disco and you as a customer. Where I have argument is if you are bypassing your meter, of course, which they do. That's a different matter. Now, for those who are not metered, for those of you who are metered, you manage energy so much. You manage it. When you are in your sitting room downstairs watching TV, you switch off the light upstairs. For those who are not metered, you just leave everything on. Even in the afternoon, I was in Yola. I saw light on outside the house, daytime, because they have no meters. So it is in our interest at this school for Nigerian to be metered. We've made this point many times over and over. We are not the one metering Nigerians. These schools are not in charge of meters. We have third party companies who, whose duty is to supply and install meters. And these companies too are also battling with foreign exchange difficulties. You cannot talk about power sector in Nigeria without talking about foreign exchange because more than 70% of what we use in the Nigerian power sector are imported. What, what does Nigeria produce? That's why I'm saying that you cannot talk about Nigerian problem today today without looking back. And you cannot continue to blame one minister you come, you abuse. Another one come, you abuse. Since 1999, I've seen so many ministers of power. In, in, 30 seconds, in 30 seconds, because Mr. Odonto, we, we have to wrap this. We have to wrap this very, very quickly. I mean, it would not make sense not to come up with concrete solutions going forward. In 30 seconds, can you come up with something that President Tinubu and his power minister can actually work with right away? Thank you. I think it is time for the president, like I said, to be watching TV, to know what is going on in the country. It should not be isolated or caged. The first thing they need to do is for there to be a stakeholder meeting, frank talk. Let us know the cost of production of electricity all the way through the value chain. Once we know the cost, let's now sit down and talk about how do we meet up with this cost? How do we reduce the shortfall that we have? So that if we can do all of that, what will happen is that we will be able to provide electricity for Nigerians. Talk is cheap. I spoke about this three years ago here in Arise. If you are not careful, we'll come back in three years' time and be talking about the same thing. It is time to talk and walk the talk. And it is time for everybody, including government, to reduce wastages in governance. Thank you so much. Very well put. Uh, Sunday Odonto, spokesman, Association of Nigeria Electricity Distributors, Aned. It's been a delight having you on Prime Time.